Hey Math 6 students, Mrs. Spence. This week we are looking at the coordinate plane and identifying the different components of a coordinate plane and using that information and knowledge to graph ordered pairs. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the coordinate plane and look at some of the different vocabulary that we have learned this week and use this as a review to help us remember the components of the coordinate plane. All right, so just to recap, what we have seen so far in our elementary school days and then even this year is we've been working with number lines that usually look like this, just one horizontal line where we have the positives on the right, we have zero in the middle, and we have negatives on the left. And we would have little numbers written down here. And that's wonderful. That definitely is still used. As you can see here, we are going to be calling this our x-axis, which we have a spot right here to identify what this arrow is pointing to. So this is one of our number lines and we call it the x-axis, okay? It is spread out wide like an x. x. X spreads out from left to right. And if I had you stand up and form this letter with your body, you would spread your arms and your legs out to form an X, spreading out from left to right. And that's something that definitely helps us when we start graphing ordered pairs. So I'm going to write a little reminder here that this is the left to right letter and it's our X axis. Okay, and you're going to see next year in seventh grade how we start to look at things called functions, where we're going to have an input that produces an output once you change it or apply a rule to something. Okay, and so we're going to talk about this again more in detail next year, but I wanted to kind of go ahead and introduce it to you all. But these coordinate planes come in very handy when you're dealing with two different numbers, okay, where one impacts the other. So like if we have a set of numbers and then we apply the same rule to it, let's say let's add three to every X number that we have, you're going to get a new number and that's our Y axis, okay? So these coordinate planes are used to show a relationship between numbers. So if you do something to a number, what it produces, okay? So they are connected and you're able to graph them together, the results together, because they're sharing the same plane. And so we'll definitely dive way deeper into that next year, but I wanted to go ahead and just share that they are connected for a reason. And we're wanting to have a horizontal line and also a um vertical line this y axis and they are going to be related in some way okay so a reminder for our y axis is if i had you stand nice and tall and form a y with your body you would be really forming a very vertical position okay you're going to be stretching up tall going from bottom to top it is a nice tall standing letter okay so it's our up and down directions when we start graphing ordered pairs but it definitely just looking at it is a very up and down letter compared to our x which is a very wide spread left and right letter okay that's just your visual um, and if you're a kinesthetic learner that is you need to stand up and make these shapes with your body and you will feel the difference between the two okay so remember that our up and down axis is our y-axis and our left and right axis is our X axis, okay? So if we're using our word bank over here, we've already filled in the Y axis, and we have filled in our X axis. So let's see what else we remember about this, okay? We have a point right here. In the middle, where the two axes come together, and it is called the origin. So that is this little box is referring 
to this point where the x-axis and the y-axis come together. If you think about driving a car, it's where the intersection happens of two main roads. All right, so we have the origin. And now the only thing left for labeling our actual coordinate plane here are the quadrants. So remember we talked about how quadrants are formed when you put two axes together. You have, I'm going to get a really big one here to highlight. You have the very first quadrant here where the positive and the positive numbers are all represented okay so this yellow box you have all positives on your x-axis going right and all positives going up represented here on your y-axis so this would be your positive positive and we call it quadrant one all right, so we always start with quadrant one at the positive positive, and then remember we make a C for our coordinate plane, and we go around this way to label our other quadrants. So this would be quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. All right, so we have just labeled all of these. And every number that's represented in quadrant two here would be, we start with our X's, our horizontal line. Okay, these are the negative side. And we're still going up, so that's our positive Y's. Our quadrant three, we are on the negative side of the horizontal X axes. And we go down, so we're going left and down, which represents all of our negative numbers on our y-axis. So this quadrant will have all negative x's and negative y's. And then our final quadrant, quadrant four, is going right on the x-axis, so that's positive. And going down on our y-axis, representing negative. So all of our quadrant four dots will have a positive X and a negative Y. All right, so let's fill in the blanks for the rest of the worksheet. Okay, a coordinate plane is two dimensional. So this is a name that we say when we're talking about two dimensions or directions, then we now are two dimensional. We went from one dimensional where we're only talking about left and right to two dimensional where now we're also talking about up and down. Okay, a coordinate, let me cross this one out. Coordinate would be the next thing. A coordinate is a pair of numbers in the form of X, Y. All right, we also call that an ordered pair. And the coordinate or ordered pair is telling you the exact location on the x-axis and the y-axis. And we talked about mapping this week and how you would need your all your northwest, south, east coordinates when you're mapping. Uh, for this, we're just doing our x and our y-axis, and it will give us our exact pinpoint location. All right. The horizontal line of a coordinate plane where points are plotted moving left and right. So if we're moving left and right, we are dealing with the, which axis? X axis, left and right spreading, left and right, okay? And then the vertical line, that's also a keyword up here, it was the horizontal line. The vertical line on a coordinate plane where points are plotted moving up and down are on the y-axis. Okay. And then there are four sections of a coordinate plane that are divided by the x and y-axis, and we call those our quadrants. 
we know that the prefix quad stands for four in math. And so that is our four sections that are created when we have the X and the Y axis. All right, so make sure you have those filled out. You can put those in your notes section of your interactive notebook. And now we're going to actually use this information to help us plot points. Now, this is something that's not going to go away in math for a long time. This is going to go through high school. So really getting comfortable plotting ordered pairs or coordinate points is going to be so helpful for you in the future maths. OK, this is not one that you're going to want to brain dump. All right, so let's plot the point three, two. So let's think about what we have here. We have both positive numbers, so we know that this should be happening in the first quadrant here because both of those will be positive, positive. Okay, so we're going to go left and right first or up and down first? Okay, I hope you said left and right first because yes, we always graph with X first and then Y. And if you ever forget that, just remember that X comes before Y in the alphabet and X will come before Y in an ordered pair as well. All right, so we're going to go to our X axis at positive three. Well, positive three is going to be on the right three spaces. So if we always start at our zero and go one, two, three, Technically, this is where we're starting from, but we don't want to put a point right here because we're not done. We also need to show our location in regards to the y-axis, which is telling us it's at positive 2. So we're going to start by going right 3, and then do we need to go up 2 or down 2 with our positive 2 that we have? Okay, I hope you said up 2 because positive 2 shows up. 1, 2, and now we can put a dot right there. And that is our location of this ordered pair, positive 3, positive 2. We went over to the right 3 and up 2 for positive and positive. Okay, now if they said plot the point A, they gave it a letter, you would want to label that, but they did not in this example. Okay, let's look at example 2. We have negative 4 positive 3. So again, we're starting with our left and our right. And because this is negative 4, we need to go left. And the positive 3 for the Y tells us we need to go up. All right, hope you got those right with me. So if we're starting at 0, we're going to go left first because left and right always goes first with an ordered pair. And it's also the first type of number line you learned was a horizontal. So we can start with that first. And then we'll add on the new number line that we just learned. Okay, so negative 3, left, oh, excuse me, negative 4, left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're not going to stay there or put a point. We're going to go from that point up 3 because it's a positive 3. 1, 2, 3. And we're going to put a dot right there. And you can look and see that we're at negative 4, positive 3, where those two lines come together is where they get the dot. All right, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for these next ones, just in case you're having a hard time like I am seeing these lines. All right, plot the point negative 3, negative 2. All right, going left and right, because that's what we do. And are we going left for this one or right when it's negative 3? Going left, very good. And then up or down for negative 2. We're going to go down 2. All right. So left and down this one, and that means we're going to be in quadrant 3 here, a double negative. All right, we're going to start going left. 1, 2, 3. Don't stay there. Go down because it's negative 2. 1, 2, and put a point. All right. You could also see that we're at negative 3, where that line and negative 2 come together would form our new point there. And the last example, plotting point 4, positive 4, 
and negative 2.5. Oh, don't freak out if you see a decimal or a fraction, especially if it's a 0.5. We know that that's half. It's halfway between 2, negative 2, and negative 3. So we're going to start with the first one, and because we have a positive 4, we should be going right, and negative 2.5, we should be going down. Okay, so let's start with our positive 4. That's on this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 2, 1, 2, and go down another half. So that's going to be in the middle there. And it's okay to put things in the middle. All right, and then we can double check. We have positive 4 on this line. And we have negative 2 and almost negative 3, so in the half there. And yes, we plotted our point correctly. All right, so I hope that review was helpful um, in understanding the coordinate plane and being able to identify the quadrants and the axes and graph ordered pairs.